Welcome back everyone to your tutorial series over SQL Server. I'm Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2, and this video is going to start our discussion on data integrity. Now I know we've been going over tons of conceptual stuff, but I see this as all foundational to creating databases. So instead of diving in and coding stuff, if we take a step back, focus on the concepts, when we go and code stuff, everything is going to be a lot smoother, a lot more fun, and just all together better. So that's why I focus so much on this stuff. And trust me, data integrity is one of the most important things in our database. What is data integrity? Data integrity is something we strive for. We want to have data integrity. Data integrity is essentially a word that means our data is correct, up to date as possible, <laughs> not conflicting, no duplicates, and is describing what we think it's describing. Now, we categorize data integrity into three categories. That's just to make it a little bit easier to think about. The first is entity integrity, the second is referential integrity, and the third is domain integrity. I'm going to take one video to discuss each one of those, and that'll give you a good foundation of everything regarding integrity. So let's start with entity integrity. Now before we dive into all the depths of entity integrity, let's first focus on what is our goal when we store data. And that goal is to follow the rule of one. Oh, oh, black, did you hear that? Blacky. You may also hear this as atomicity or things being atomic. And essentially everything is supposed to describe one thing. Even if we have a table called books, this here, even though it's plural, is describing one type of thing. This is known as the entity type. We wouldn't want this table to describe books and CDs. That would be breaking our rule of one. So that's the first thing we want to do. Get rid of anything that's breaking the rule of one. If you want to store CDs, that's fine. Just put it in a different table. But in general, if we get more specific, it's a little bit easier to work with the data because we know all the data is describing books. Now, each row describes one individual book. Each column describes one thing about that book. In addition to that, we should only have one record per book. So over here is my beautifully designed book, <laughs> and we want to store that in our books table. First, it would probably have an ID, maybe a name, an author, and uh, ISBN maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, you can store any book in here. The thing that's important is that we only have one row to describe that individual book. Now you also have to consider, is this table describing individual books, like books at a library, for example, or is it describing individual books that have been created or published? For example, if we had two of these books, would they both be inputted into the table, or would it just be inputted into the table once because it's both the same book? That's kind of a design concept you're going to have to wrap your brain around. And it's not a huge issue in this video because we're just starting with the basics. But let's just say every single book gets a row. So we can put this book right here. This works out great because we have this ID. But let's say we got rid of that ID. We might have a table and it'll have a, a title, author, and ISBN. And this is a very simply designed. Often you would take the authors and put them into their own table. But this is like a very simple example. And you have this book in here twice, right? Well, since it's the same book, the data is going to be exactly the same. So that brings up the question, do we have one book in the table twice? Or do we have two books that are different, both in their one time? <laughs> it's kind of a confusing question, but it's important to understand why we are asking that. If we had to ask that with real data, we would be in a situation where we do not have good data integrity because we don't know what this data is describing. Is this describing one book or two books? I don't know. That's where the primary key comes in and saves the day. So if we add a column onto this and we label it as primary key, that is going to enforce every single row to be unique. And when we have a primary key, we should be able to expect that every single row is talking about a new book. The reason the primary key is so helpful is because it's both unique and not null. Why is it important that it's unique and not null? It's because that is what is required to force every row to be unique. 
So entity integrity revolves around primary keys. That's what it's about. To get entity integrity, you need to make sure every table has a primary key. Now, if you don't know what to use as a primary key, just create one, say, whatever the table's called, let's say books, ID, so simple. If you're trying to store books, give it an ID of books ID. Boom, that simple. Now that's an example of a surrogate key. Surrogate means computer generated, no real world meaning. This book might have an ID of nine, but that means absolutely nothing in the real world. It's not related to the ISBN, it's not related to anything. It's just a computer generated number for the sake of the database only. That's in contrast to a natural key. A natural key is something that has real world meaning. For example, this library might give every book they ever get a code, and they could use that as the natural key. The only things that are very important is that the key is unique, not in all, and in addition to this, it never changes. I mean, think about it. If we had this book with the ID of eight, and then one day it changed to nine or 10, is it a new book or is it the same book with a new ID? That's confusing. That throws our integrity into question. So you gotta make sure all of these three things are met when you're using a primary key. And if you're using a surrogate primary key, it's super easy. Natural keys can change, so it's a little confusing. Natural keys are more likely to change because they have real world meaning, but they should still never change if they are labeled a primary key. So, so much chalk. So yeah guys, I know, all that was kind of confusing. It's a bit messy, but that's because database design is a messy, confusing topic. There's a lot of questions you have to ask yourself, a lot of things to consider, and there's just a lot of questions you don't think about until you start designing a database. That's why I've been focusing so heavily on data integrity, so you guys understand, and when we start creating databases, I can just create them and I don't have to explain every single thing, like, oh, what the heck is this foreign key? Why are we labeling this unique and not null? And why is this primary key? And why is there three tables? And <laughs> all of that stuff. So. This is like the foundation. Don't neglect it, it's important, and it's going to help you in your database career. So thanks guys, as always, click subscribe, click like, and I will see you in the next video.